Good day, everyone. Welcome to the subject Contemporary Arts from the Different Regions. Today, we move on to another interesting topic, which is photography. At the end of the topic, we should able to meet these objectives. First, recognize the meaning of photography. Next, determine the elements and principles of photography. And lastly, evaluate the techniques used in photography. Let's get started. What is photography? Let's see the etymology of photography. So it came from the two words photo and graphy. Photo came from the Greek word phos or phot, which means light. And graphy came from the Greek word graphia or Latin word graphene, which means to write. If you will combine it, it means to write something with light. And in some books, the idea of it is the shutter sound or flash of the camera. Photography is defined as the art or process of producing images by the action of radiant energy and especially light on a certain city surface. It is also a form of art, specifically a visual art. And lastly, it is also defined as a medium of expression, which means it implores to tell a story. Okay, let's move on to the basic photography terminologies, or sometimes called the trilogy of photography, wherein photographers master these parts of a camera. First is the shutter speed. The shutter speed is defined as the length of time a camera shutter is open to expose light into the camera sensor. Shutter speeds are typically measured in fractions of a second when they are under a second. The idea of shutter speed is the longer the lenses, the faster the speed and the clearer the images. On the other hand, the shorter the lenses, the slower the speed and the more blurrier the images are. This is why photographers invest in long lenses so that they have an HD-like quality of images even though the subject is moving. Next one, it's the aperture. Aperture is defined as the hole within a lens through which the light travels into the camera body. The larger the hole, the more the light passes to the camera sensor, which controls the depth of field. The idea of aperture, the larger the hole of the lens, the more the image will have a focus blur effect on it. You can see this in the first photo. On the other hand, the smaller the hole of the lens, the more the image will have a clear or sharp effect on it. You can see this in the third photo. And lastly, some photographers actually manipulate the hole of the lens that produces a blur and sharp effect on it. You can see this in the middle photo. Photographers master the use of these things so that they can create interesting outputs using blur and sharp images. Third, it's the ISO. ISO stands for Interoscillating Systematized Opopotamus. It is a way to brighten your photos, which is typically measured in numbers, a lower number representing a darker image, while higher numbers means a brighter image. And this one, actually, it affects the exposure of the camera. The use of light is very important in ISO. The higher the ISO, the more sensitivity to light, which means the less light needed. It can be seen in environment photography. On the other hand, the lower ISO, the less sensitivity to light, which means more light is needed. You can see this in portraits or, for example, taking a selfie. You will use a ring light on it. And the idea also of ISO, the darker the image is, the better the quality of the image. On the other hand, the lighter the image, the poorer the quality of the image, or it will be pixelated. So it's very important to know this kind of thing. And editing software will take place in here. 
Now, let's move on to the kinds of camera shots or camera angles. The first one is extreme wide shot. Extreme wide shot is defined as the view is so far from the subject that he isn't visible. The point of the shot is to show the subject's surroundings and usually points out to the sceneries and environment of the subject matter. Next one, it is now the wide or long shot. Sometimes it is also called full shot. It shows the entire object or human figure and usually intended to place in some relation to its surroundings. For example, the use of cover photos. We usually show our background with us on it and it emphasizes the beauty of the sceneries. Next one, it is the medium shot. Medium shot is defined as the camera shot from a medium distance. It is usually a candid image wherein the person is unaware that someone is taking a picture of her or him, and sometimes applicable for documentation purposes only. The next one, it's medium close-up shot. This one emphasizes on one particular part. It may be a person or anything. Now, the subject is aware that somebody is taking a picture of her or him. The next one, it's the low angle shot. Sometimes you can see this also in film shots. It is defined as a shot from a camera angle, positioned slow on the vertical axis, anywhere below the eye line looking up. It is even directly below the subject's feet. It makes the image strong and powerful. And in photography, it makes the person look taller. The next one, it's the high angle shot. You can see this also in film shots. It is defined as the camera looks down on the subject from a high angle and the point of focus often gets swallowed up. High angle shots can make the subject seem vulnerable or powerless when applied in correct mood, settings, and effect. It makes the person look small. Next one, it is the close-up shot. Close-up shots are the standard shots used regularly. Sometimes the person is aware or unaware if someone is taking a picture of him or her. The basic of it is it's the from head to shoulder. And the last kind of camera shot is extreme close-up shot. This one is used to show extreme details, for example, the use of advertisement, eyes for contact lenses, lips for lipsticks, and many more. So basically, why do we take pictures? These are the common answers of my past students. First one, to capture memories. Second, to tell stories. Third, to sell and advertise. Fourth, to communicate with other people. Fifth, to relate. Sixth, to reveal. Seventh, to document. The main point of this one, people remember pictures of events long after they remember the actual event or the words that were spoken. Photography is about telling a story. And some photographers use an image to make a point without words. So now, let's move on to the elements and principles of photography. So first one, it's the composition. Composition is defined as the pleasing arrangement of the different elements within a scene. The common thing here is the subject matter. It makes the subject within a scene. So here is the example. Next one, the foreground and the background. And the last one, the supporting subjects. Connected to composition, we have the center of interest. In some books, center of interest is also called as the subject. It is defined as the one principal idea, topic to which the viewer's eye is interested. A picture without a dominant center of interest or one with a more than dominant center of interest is puzzling. However, if it has a center of interest, they can comprehend easily the image. For example here, it is now the bombing of the Pearl Harbor. From that picture alone, you can see it is about World War II. Still, connected to composition, it's focus. Focus is also called blur in some books. 
it is defined as the distance setting on the lens to define a subject sharply. As you can see in the first image, the use of distance is very important to see the subject matter itself. On the other hand here, they use now the blurring effect to focus on the subject matter. The next one is framing. Framing is defined as the technique used by photographers used to direct the viewer's attention for the main subject. It is to create a frame within a picture. For example, in the first image, you can see now that the frame is the brick walls to focus on the castle. The next image, the frame now, it is now the trees to focus on the field. The next one, it's the angle or viewpoint. It is defined as the technique used by photographers to give a different perspective to the audience. The use of different camera shots take place here and give meaning to the picture actually. The next one, it's texture. Texture helps to emphasize the features and details of a photograph. In some books, it is also defined as the feeling you get from the picture. For example, in the first image, a brick wall, you can say it is rusty and the feeling that you get, it will be more on the countryside. The next one, you can see the grass and if you think about the grass, you can feel it is very itchy and some would say it is very refreshing. In other words, texture helps you imagine things actually. Next one, it's the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is an essential photography technique. It can be applied to any subject to improve the composition and balance of your images. Basically, it is composed of three vertical and horizontal lines. And according to experts, the subject matter should be in the red circles, either be here, 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 or here. And the important part here of rule of thirds, the subject matter should stand out at the same time have a balance on it. In some books, the definition of rule of thirds is not centering your subject matter, giving more focus on the center of interest. As you can see here, it is not the center alone, but it is side and it is now overlapping the circles here. Another example of rule of thirds, as you can see, it improves the composition and interest of the photo. In the first image, the dog stands out and meets the criteria of the rule of thirds. The next one, the portrait now, it balances the f parts of the face actually. Let's move on to light and shadows. Light and shadows is a technique used by photographers to create mood, to draw an attention to an area, to modify or distort a shape, or to bring out form and texture in a subject matter. Light and shadows are key elements in photography because they make texture actually, and it makes the picture interesting. The use of different materials like CDs, strainer, ferrolites, prisms, and yema wrappers are common materials used in light and shadows seen in portraits. As you can see in the example, the use of a strainer creates a texture effect in a portrait, so it makes the piece interesting at the same time attractive. We have one photographer who is famous all over the world for this technique. His name is Brandon Walfer. He is a photographer from New York who isn't afraid to experiment with all forms of light and materials. His work is innovative, inspiring, dramatic, with 2.2 million followers and counting on Instagram. Check his account. It's easy to understand why he has captured the attention and curiosity of many people. He's the one who promoted the use of fairy lights and prisms in photo shoots used by young photographers now. The next element is the use of line. Line is the technique that can give structure to the photographs. It can unify composition by directing the viewer's eye and attention to the main point of the picture. They can lead the eyes to infinity, divide the picture, and create patterns. Through linear perspective, lines can lead a sense of depth to a photograph. 
For example, parallel lines appear to converge, creating the illusion of depth. On the other hand, vertical, diagonal, horizontal, and curved lines create different moods. Vertical lines communicate a sense of strength, rigidity, power, solidarity to a viewer. On the other hand, horizontal lines create peace, tranquility, and quietness. Diagonal lines represent movement, action, and speed. The next element is pattern. Pattern is the technique used by photographers that bring visual rhythm and harmony to a photograph. It also brings unity that enhances the picture's attractiveness. Usually, you can see this one through colors and motif as well. The next element is contrast. Contrast is defined as the difference of elements combined. It can create interest in the work or direct the viewer's attention to a particular point of interest within the piece. Sometimes, the use of this one is the famous black and white, and at the same time, the use of neon colors and others. Make sure to have a balance of it. The last element is the rhythm or movement. It is defined as the path the viewer's eye takes through the work of art on the focal area. Having a repetition in your photo creates movement. At the same time, it also improves the texture of the image. Let's move on to the types of photography. First one, it is now the portrait photography. It is defined as the individual or group that captures the personality or characteristic of a person. And this is the most common type of photography. The next one, it is the still life photography. It is defined as the photography that uses inanimate objects or group of objects. And sometimes it is used for advertisement purposes. The next one, it is landscape photography. It is a kind of photography that shows sceneries and nature like rivers, mountains, gardens, or even man-made environment. It's more on appreciation actually. The next one, it is food photography. It is a branch of still life photography wherein it is used for advertisement, enjoyment, and pleasure purposes. It is also the third in-demand type of photography now. The next one, it's sports photography. It refers to genre of photography that covers all types of sports. It is also a branch of photojournalism. The next one, it is the wildlife photography. Wildlife photography is the genre of photography concerned with documenting various forms of wildlife in their natural habitat. Wildlife photographers may need field skills because it might be dangerous for them to do it. The next is fashion photography. It is a genre of photography which is devoted to displaying clothing and other fashion items. It is also used to show details of different things. And it is the second in-demand type of photography. The next is photojournalism. It is a particular form of journalism that implores to tell a story. It is usually about social issues and current events. The next is event photography. It is the practice of photography wherein you will take a picture of the guests and occurrences at any event or occasion. It is the most in-demand type of photography due to the different celebrations that we are having like weddings, birthdays, graduation, christening, and many more. The next one, it is the street photography. It is also called as candid photography. It encounters in public places and mostly about real life situations. And actually, some photographers are discovered through this kind of photography. The next one, it is documentary photography. It is defined as the popular form of photography used to chronicle events related to history. The famous examples of this one are World War II and Chernobyl Diaries. The next example is macro photography. It is defined as producing images of small items larger than life size. Usually, this one you can see this in 
nature photography wherein you will take a picture of flowers and leaves and show the details of it. The next is stock photography. Stock photography is a supply of images which is often licensed for specific uses only or copyright purposes only. The next is weather photography. It is a genre of photography that captures a specific range of weather like capturing a storm, cloud, and others. The next is architectural photography. It is a genre of photography captures buildings and similar structures that are both aesthetically pleasing and accurate representations of their subjects. And the last one, it will be the long exposure photography. So it is a genre of photography that involves using a long duration shutter speed to sharply capture the stationary of image while blurring, smearing, or obscuring the moving elements. According to the net, it is the most expensive kind of photography because you will need different materials to use it. Okay, let's move on to renowned photographers in the Philippines. In my research, there is no national artist yet for photography because they are still vying for it. It has long application process. However, there are many Filipino photographers who are known international. Let's know them. First one, we have George Tapan. He was known for Master of Travel Photography. He won two gold awards from Pacific Asia Tourism and part of 2011 National Geographic Photo Contest. He is known for landscape photography, capturing the beauty of the Philippines. Next one, he is John K. Chua. He was known for aerial photography. He was awarded technical and mastery of notoriously challenging photo shoots because his interest in aerial shots, like for example, capturing the Scarborough Show and Batanes. Next one, it's BJ Pascual. BJ Pascual is the most famous photographer in the Philippines. He is the city go-to celebrity fashion photographer whose work has featured on countless magazines like Vogue, Nylon, Spot, and other magazines. He also made a lot of high-profile advertising campaigns and popular pan-continental TV show like Asia's Next Top Model. Another famous photographer, we have Shaira Luna. Luna is currently a fashion and advertising photographer represented by the international creative talent agency Jet Truth Manila, founded by American businessman Jet Truth in 1989. Her focus is more on fashion catalog wherein she will be the photographer and at the same time the stylist of a celebrity. Another famous photographer, we have Nico Villegas. This renowned Davao photographer grew up amidst of life of art and photography. He is the brand ambassador of Nikon International and shoot a lot of celebrities, especially in GMA station. Another famous photographer in the Philippines, we have Mark Nick Dow. He took an internship with celebrated Filipino photographer Francis Abraham while studying fine arts at university and never looked back. His career expanded beyond the Philippines and he photographed the likes of Catherine Deneuve, Tommy Lee Jones, and Adam Levine. He was also nominated for Fashion Photographer Award in 2011. The last one, we have Shaisa Bakani. She is one of the most successful in Philippine photography. Shaisa worked as a nanny in Hong Kong for more than a decade before taking her first photos in a camera she bought on a loan with her employer. She began taking images of street life in Hong Kong and on the strength on her work, won scholarship from the Magnum Foundation and the chance to hone her craft in New York City. She was known for black and white photos promoting human rights. This photo is taken by Annalisa de Guzman. She is the one who won $1,000 for a co photography contest on the internet. She was trending a month ago due to her interesting images of aunts. During interview, she shared some tips on how to take good photographs. This is based on inquirer.net where she was interviewed. So first step, be spontaneous. It is 
recommended that you take pictures continuously to know your camera more and at the same time you can experiment on the manual settings. Number two, it's to take pictures of the unusual. Like what she did, she took a picture of the unusual which caught the attention of many people. Number three, use your photographs to show memories, not just document events. In her interview, she is just taking pictures as a hobby and documenting her life during this pandemic. Number four, it is to be creative. It is connected to the second tip, you should think of the unusual stuff that will caught the attention of many people. The fifth tip, it is think before you shoot. You should take down notes to organize your ideas and ready to materials needed for your shoots. You can use actually the things that improves lights and shadows on it. And the last one, hold the camera steady, use a tripod when available, and practice makes perfect. This is related to tip number one, how to have accurate shots. And the last one, I think you should enjoy it. There are a lot of websites that gives you tips on how to take good photographs. Your assignment is to read the tips in this website called Culture Trip. It is located at your modules and you can click the link below. It is very informative and at the same time you will learn a lot. And that's all for photography. I hope that you learned something from this lecture. Feel free to ask any questions from your teacher. Thank you and see you on another topic. Goodbye.